Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit guide your thoughts, our thoughts, yours and mine, in order for us to understand His voice, His word, and follow it, and obey it, and practice it, and have the faith, and have the faith to embrace the Word of God, to obey it. Because faith is not a feeling. Faith is not a feeling. Just as love is not a feeling. Did you know that? God is love. God is not a feeling. God is love. And when a person loves, they want the best for their neighbor. They want the best for those whom they love. And this is not a feeling. This is love. The person loves, then they wish the best for their neighbor. And not just for their family members, their friends, and the people that do good to them. No, they want the best for everyone. Everyone. Because they love. God is love. And God gives us the spirit of love. He gives us love in order for us to love, which means to want the best for our neighbor. So, you see, you can see well, for example, a person who is of God, they want the best for everyone, because God wants the best for everyone. Even those who do not believe in God and disdain Him, even those who are unbelievers, those who are unbelieving fanatics, God still loves them. God allows the sun to shine over the head as well as the rain, right? For you as well. He gives them the air to breathe. God gives them the earth to cultivate and take the best out of it. God is good, which means that He wants the best for everyone. The problem is that there are those who do not accept such love, who reject this love, unfortunately. And what can he do? He can do nothing. Those who reject God's love will harvest the fruit of the hatred they carry. No doubt about that. Whether they like it or not, whether they have knowledge, understanding, whatever it is, they will harvest what they reap. But when a person understands God... When a person has God in them, the Almighty, then they want the best even for their enemies. Jesus said, what is the point of you loving those who love you? It means nothing. Now, what you need to do is to love your enemies. Come on, Bishop. Was Jesus in his straight mind when he said that? Was he okay? If God were to hate his enemies, no one would be left. Almost no one here on earth. God wants the best for everyone. And in this spirit of love, of faith, faith is not a feeling either. Faith is action an action of courage, of determination. You believe, you then go forward. If you don't believe, you stay still. That's it. It's pointless for you to believe and feel, but then do nothing about it. You are going to be left out. Pay attention. Have a look at this. The prayer that pleases God, that pleased God, so much so that it was registered in the Bible 
as an example of faith, a divine faith that pleases God. Pay attention to this. This is the prayer that pleased God. And this prayer was said by a guru. The holy text says that a guru there in Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 7 says like this. Two things I request of you. A guru asked God for two things. Two things, only two things. Deprive me not before I die. Meaning, what I want from you is this, two things. Firstly, remove falsehood and lies far from me. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty no riches. Two things. Two things. Pay attention. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. And the third, apparently it's a third request, but it's the second thing. And the second one is, feed me with the food allotted to me. This is too great. This is too wonderful. Two things that I ask of you, my father. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. And give me neither poverty nor riches. So that's one thing. The second thing. Feed me with the food allotted to me. That's it. Feed me with the food allotted to me. You know, we live a simple life. A life that we are used to. The life of rice and beans, beans and rice. And we live that very limited, simple life but with abundance, with the things you like, the things you want, what satisfies your organism. This is the food allotted to us. And I see myself here in this text, because when I'm at home with Esther, Esther and I, we have our food allotted to us. We have that, that life, you know, the time to go to sleep, to wake up, to have lunch, to have a coffee. We are already used to that, let's say, healthy routine. A healthy routine. But when I go visit a country and I stay in, in the house of a pastor in that other house, or I go to a hotel, then that allotted portion goes down the drain. And then we start having problems. Then we start having headaches. Because we get out of that routine that we are used to. So the body feels, literally, our body feels it. For example, if you go to sleep in another bed, use another pillow, come on. Yes or no? Sometimes the air conditioner is too cold or it's too hot. You know, there's always something that bothers, that makes us a bit uneasy. And I'm talking about myself here. If I'm not in my customary life and living my routine as usual, then things are not as they should be for me. And this request, this prayer, it's a beautiful prayer, not just beautiful, but also intelligent, wise. Because when he says, remove falsehood from me, falsehood 
is what makes people destroy themselves because they want to show off. They want to present something that it's not real. And they know that at the end of the day, it will all end. Vanity, falsehood, all these passes. And also lies. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Not only that, but also give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Give me the daily bread. It's what Jesus taught. Jesus teaches this prayer in a different way. Our Father in heaven. And then he says, Give us this day our daily bread. And people didn't really understand what Jesus said. So he said to them, you are so anxious about this and that. You want this and the other. Look at the birds. Look at the birds. They don't work. They don't toil. They have no barns. But every day they go and get their daily bread and they find it. Not just the birds, but all the animals. God provides for all the animals that are all over the world. He provides them with their daily bread. That's it. They lack nothing. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't give me the daily bread today for tomorrow also and after tomorrow and for next year. No, give me the daily bread today. You see that the Bible says that rich people have no peace. Did you know that? They have so much that they have no peace. Why? Because the more the person has, the more their mind will be administrating problems and they won't be at peace. And here, Agur, when he asks for God to remove falsehood and lies far from him, to not give him neither poverty nor riches. He's being extremely wise. He's living off of his daily bread. Feed me with the food allotted to me, the daily bread, every day. My God, give me the bread for today. And this will never lack. Lest I, he continues with his prayer, lest I be fool and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. And this happens a lot. This situation here, lest I be fool and deny you. And how many haven't been those who have been falling in the trap of Satan because of wealth? Because they have a lot. Because they have too much. Jesus said here in the parable of the sower that the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke, it chokes, they choke the wood, the wood of God. And it is fruitful in their life. How many people, they came to church as beggars, and I can tell you this because I've seen this, we show this, people who two years ago, entered the church as beggars. A year later, they were rich. It seemed as though they had won the jackpot. But after some time, they went back to their misery. Why? Because they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't have the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, to administrate their possessions. So, Jesus says that the cares of this world, the vanities, the lusts of this world, the 
wealth, the riches of the world, suffocate, choke, they choke the word of God. And the person stands between enjoying what they have and serving God. They then are divided. They believe this way. Let me divide my time. Some time I give to God, some time is for my money, my wealth. And of course, that they will be carried away by wealth and want more wealth and more and more and more and end up turning their back on God. How many people that right now are listening to me that once had plenty, they had a lot, and today they have nothing? Why? Because they forsook their spiritual life. They placed their faith aside. They forsook spiritual values, and they held on to the nonsense of this world. And today they are lost. They want to come back, but they can't. Why? Because they are choked, they were choked by the passions of the world, by the cares of the world, the pride of life, the lust of the world, by wealth. Solomon was the richest, the most powerful, the wisest man on the face of the earth. The wisest one, the richest one, the most powerful one. And still, you know how he ended. He, f he was frustrated. He got to the conclusion that everything is vanity. My life is vanity. My life is vanity. He said, in the days of my vanity, meaning he buried himself. And he left an, a curse as an inheritance to his children, to his descendants, up until today. Israel suffers because of this. Therefore, dear friends, this prayer here, which is like the Lord's Prayer, this prayer here has everything to do with the Lord's Prayer because the person is intelligent, wise. They're not seeking wealth or greatness or vanity. They want the food allotted to them, the daily bread, the daily bread. Wow, I remember when I was a, a boy in my childhood, I grew up in a farm. So in the morning there was no bread because we lived in a farm. So in the morning they would cook something similar to porridge, but made of corn. This is done a lot in Brazil, in farms where they have corn plantation. They would make that porridge with milk and corn, and they would prepare a coffee, coffee with milk and porridge. How delicious. There is no bread, there is no brioche bread, there is nothing in this world to me better than a cup of coffee, milk and porridge. Wow. It's our daily bread. I learned to live this life here that a guru asks God for the food allotted to him. Praise God. And here I am. Here I am. Hallelujah. Therefore, dear friends, now that I know the word of God, come on. I mean, I know parts of it. The word of God guides us to choose the daily food that we need, the daily bread, and we are satisfied with that. Praise God. Learn to say this prayer, dear friends. You can read this in Proverbs chapter 30 from verses 7 to 9. I understand here that he asks, Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. I, I see this as the first request. And the second one is, feed me with the food allotted to me. And that's what I pray. Every day I ask this to my God. My God, give me today my daily bread. I don't know what I need to say to the people. I don't know what people need to hear. Only you know. So give us the daily bread. And today is your daily bread for you, for all of us. Okay? 
May God bless you all and we shall be back here tomorrow. Praise God.